April 1850 Epistle Third General Epistle of the Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints From the Great Salt Lake Valley to the Saints Scattered Throughout the Earth Greeting Beloved brethren, when we contemplate your diversified situations in connection with the great work in which you have enlisted, it is one of our highest sources of enjoyment for the time to arrive when we can communicate to you by letter what we would make known by tongue were you with us, and if you, being filled with the same spirit, shall enjoy as much in reading as we do in writing, we shall feel that our labors have not been in vain, for we should thereby have the assurance that that brotherly love and kindred feeling necessary for the peace and prosperity of the church are sure and steadfast, and on the increase among those who profess to love Jesus Christ. We are here in the mountains, far removed from the revolutions and daily intelligence of the nations, and have heard nothing from them, or from our brethren who dwell afar, since September. But, though separated from our kindred of Adam's posterity, and dependent a large portion of the time on our own resources for information and enjoyment, we have the pleasing consolation that we are located near the tops of the everlasting hills, and higher upon the mountains than most other people. Consequently, we are nearer the heavens, those regions of light and glory from whence we derive intelligence, and from whence all blessings flow. The welfare of scattered Israel lies near our hearts. It is our theme by day and by night, in meditation, in counsel, in prayer, in action. We are at home nowhere, only as we are engaged in building up the kingdom of God, and it is one of the greatest sources of our joy, to be permitted to be the servants unto the saints, and we ever seek the earliest opportunity to communicate the situation of the brethren in the valley, and to diffuse that light of which our Heavenly Father is pleased to make us the recipients, that we may all be edified and grow up together in the knowledge of God, and be prepared for celestial glory. Some emigrants from Michigan arrived at this place on the 15th of November, accompanied by Mr. Vasquez, bringing letters from the elders then going east, who were at Little Sandy, October 30th, all well, and on the 22nd of the same month snow covered the valley from one and a half to two inches, and on the 24th it was about three and a half feet in Mill Creek Canyon. And on the same day Elder Parley P. Pratt, with a company of about fifty men, left the most southern settlement of this valley, where they had rendezvoused the day previous for the purpose of exploring the south country, to learn its geography, history, climate, and locations for settlements. Nineteen emigrants arrived December 1st in a very destitute situation, having left their wagons more than forty miles back, and their teams about twenty, themselves without provision. They reported having left the States on the 24th of September, and having passed Elder Taylor's company at Independence Rock November 6th, but so closely were they pressed by the snow, they did not bring us one newspaper, though they said they had many in their wagons. An express was sent by Captain Stansbury of the United States Topographical Engineers, stationed at this place to Fort Hall, some time in December, but so deep was the snow it was obliged to return without accomplishing its object, and business generally was suspended in the valley during this month, though a few milder days near the last permitted the raising of the roofing timbers of the council house, which had been prepared in the bowery, which has been occupied as a great workshop during the cold weather. On the 5th of January, Captain Stansbury sent a second express to Fort Hall, which accomplished its mission, and returned after a tedious journey together with the paymaster and some other officers of the U.S. Army from Fort Hall, who reported but little snow in the vicinity of the fort, but immense quantities on the route, and that a large portion of government cattle at Cache Valley had died through the severity of the weather and snow, which fell in this valley from ten inches to two feet deep on the 18th and 19th, and in some of the same month a terrible wind swept over our valley from the south, and continued about twenty-four hours, driving all animals before it, the snow being so deep and light as to be subject to its influence, piercing through the thickest clothing, causing men to seek shelter in the house, and cattle to gather in hollows and under cliffs, where in some instances they were buried, suffocated, and frozen in heaps. The snow having commenced somewhat earlier than usual found the brethren nearly destitute of wood, and about the time last mentioned it was reported in the city that fifteen sleighs were buried in the snow and dry canyon. But in the evening the men and teams came into the city all safe. The facts were, the brethren had passed the canyon in the morning, and while loading their sleds on the mountainside an avalanche or slide of snow came down on their track, and filled the canyon some fifty or sixty feet deep, prevented their passage. But by leaving their wood and making a pass on the side of the mountains, drivers and teams were all saved. We mention this as one of the pleasures, inconveniences, or casualties that the saints in the mountains are liable to experience, 
when they have not provided their winter's wood in the summer and the snow has been from six to twenty feet deep in our canyons a great share of the past winter on the thirtieth of january four men arrived from fort bridger having left their goods and remaining pack animals in weber canyon a portion of their horses having died on the way before reaching the canyon this was the second attempt of the same company to pass from the fort to the valley and their goods remained in the canyon on the thirtieth of march during the past season the winter weather has been longer by four or five weeks than the season previous and more snow but not so severely cold and the prospect for grain is good it is generally believed that there is as much good-looking wheat now on the ground as it grew here last year and there are large quantities of the best california and two sweet ready for sowing there are also large quantities of california barley a valuable article and many other choice seeds which will greatly enhance the farming interest the present season and no exertion will be wanting on the part of the brethren here to raise food for those who may come to the harvest the snow in the valley was nearly dispersed in the latter part of february but frequent falls since and night frost through the month of march prevented ploughing to any great extent till near the first of april when the earth was bare spring rains began to fall and the farmers began to improve the cheering return of seed time in the confidence of an abundant harvest and we would still urge upon the brethren who have choice or rare seeds to bring them with them for although there are a great variety of seeds in the valley there are many good varieties on the earth which we have not yet obtained and if we had abundance of the white silacea our choicest kinds of sugar beet seed at this time there would be no necessity of our importing sugar and molasses after the present season for the vegetables of the valley are richer in saccharine matter than in any other place in our acquaintance as we anticipated in our last letter about sixty families under the presidency of patriarch isaac morley left this place in october and commenced a settlement in san pete or sand pitch valley one hundred and thirty four miles south they have suffered many inconveniences through the deep snows and severe frosts for want of houses and other ne necessaries common in old settlements and have lost many of their cattle but they have laid the foundation of a great and glorious work and those who persevere to the end in following the counsel of heaven will find themselves a thousandfold richer than those who have made their gold their counselor and worshipped it as their god their cattle now living have been sustained by their shoveling snow from the grass and feeding them with their provision and seed grain and we have sent them loaded teams to supply their necessities until after seed time they have been surrounded by a tribe of indians who appear friendly and who have suffered much from the measles since they have been among them and many have died as have also most or all of the tribes in the mountains and those who live urge the brethren to remain among them and learn them how to raise grain and make bread for having tasted a little during their afflictions they want a full supply there is plenty of firewood easy of access some of the best pine bituminous coal salt and plaster of paris at this settlement or its immediate vicinity the utah lake indians have been very troublesome for a long time even before the pioneers arrived in this valley we were told by all the mountaineers we met that they were bad indians that we could not live near them in peace and that other clans of the utah nation did not like them on acquaintance we found all these statements true and particularly since our last communication they have been very hostile killed many scores of our cattle stole horses waylaid and shot at the brethren at utah until self-defense demanded immediate action their doings were presented to captain stansbury also the paymaster and such officers of the u s army stationed at fort hall as were here at the time and they were unanimous in their decision that it was necessary that those indians should be chastised and that it belonged to the u s troops at fort hall to do it but the snow was so deep the troops could not come hither therefore it became necessary for the citizens to proceed against them which they did advised by all and accompanied by some of the said national officers when a portion of the indians entrenched in a deep ravine covered with thick brush near fort utah fought desperately two days the eighth and ninth of february with the loss of several of their warriors one of our brethren was killed and a few wounded who have since recovered after a few more skirmishes in which none of the brethren were killed or wounded peace was restored there are many tribes of the utah indians or many clans of that tribe from whom we have heard and they appear satisfied with our course and say it is good the lakes were bad indians and there is no probability that the remaining utes will offer any further violence at present and we hope never elder pratt returned about the middle of february with a part of the exploring company and left the remainder of the teams in yoab valley the snow being so deep oxen could not travel without much difficulty a portion of the way 
They all arrived in safety about the 28th of March. The company went south, more than 300 miles, and over the rim of the basin into the borders of the valley of the Colorado, passing trackless mountains covered with deep snow, and followed by excessively cold weather, the mercury in several instances falling 20 degrees below zero. They found some small valleys with little or no snow, warm and pleasant, desirable for settlements, one of which is Little Salt Lake, where we design a settlement the present season. Good water, iron ore, and wood are abundant. Little comparatively could be learned of the vegetable or mineral productions of the country through which they passed, but they saw enough to know that popular geographers have hitherto known less of its prominent features. Suffice it to say, there is yet room in the valleys of the mountains for all who can be contented with honest industry, peace, and seclusion. On the 22nd of February the shock of an earthquake was sensibly felt in the valley, to a great extent causing houses to jar and crockery and furniture to move considerably. The report of volcanic eruptions or commotions of the earth resembling the discharge of distant canyon are not infrequent in the mountains. The health of the saints in general is good, and there has never been any prevailing sickness in our midst, and but very few deaths. Since last mail, brothers Absalom Perkins, George W. Langley, Erastus Snow's eldest son, Claudius V. Spencer's wife, Sister Jane Hall, Turley, Stewart, and Thompson, are all we re recollect, and those mostly from consumption and other symptoms of disease contracted long before they came to the valley. The General Assembly of Deseret have held an adjourned session at intervals through the winter, and transacted much important business, such as dividing the different settlements into Weber, Great Salt Lake, Utah, San Pete, Yoab, and Tooele counties, and establishing county courts with their judges, clerks, and sheriffs, and justices and constables in the several precincts. Also a Supreme Court to hold its annual sessions at Great Salt Lake City, attended by a state marshal and attorney, and instituting a general jurisprudence, so that every case, whether criminal or civil, may be attended to by officers of state according to law, justice, and equity without delay. They have also chartered a state university on the most liberal principles to be located at Great Salt Lake City, with branches throughout the state if wanted, and appropriated for its benefit $5,000 per annum for 20 years out of the public treasury, all of which will be under the supervision, direction, and control of a chancellor, 12 regents, secretary and treasurer, who will, no doubt, publish their intentions by this mail. On account of the severe weather, little has been done on the public building since last fall. The foundations of the public storehouse and store are laid, and the aqueducts from the warm spring to the public baths are rapidly progressing, and they will be ready for use in a short time. Captain Stansbury, with his topographical engineers, are surveying Great Salt Lake and the adjacent country for the purpose of mapping, which, when completed, will unquestionably be very interesting to our friends abroad, for by it they will better understand our relative locations. Many brethren have gone to the gold mines, and many are about going and all by counsel, as they say, and no doubt truly. A few have gone according to the advice of those whose right it is to counsel the saints, and such are right, inasmuch as they do right. But much the greater portion have gone according to the counsel of their own wills and covetous feelings. Some might have done more good by staying in the valley and laboring to prepare the way for the reception of the brethren, but it is not too late for them to do good and be saved if they will do right in their present sphere of action, and although they will not get so great a reward as they would have done had they performed the greater good. If, at the mines, they will listen to the counsel of those men who have been appointed to counsel them, and when they return work righteousness, and do as they would be done unto, and acknowledge God in all their ways, they may yet attain unto great glory. But if they shall cease to hearken to counsel, and make gold their God, and return among the saints filled with avarice, and refuse to lend or give or suffer their money to be used unless they can make a great speculation thereby, and will see their poor brethren who have toiled all the day in want and in perplexity, and they will not relieve but keep the dust corroding in their purses. It had been better for them if a millstone had been hanged about their necks and they had been drowned in the depths of the sea, before they had departed from the right ways of the Lord. For if they shall continue thus to harden their hearts and to shut up their bowels of compassion against the needy, they will go down to the pit with all idolaters, in a moment they are not aware, with as little pity as they have manifested to their poor brethren, who will have borrowed of them, but have been sent away empty. Gold is good in its place. It is good in the hands of a good man to do good with, but in the hands of a wicked man it often proves a curse instead of a blessing. Gold is a good servant, but a miserable, blind, and helpless God, and at last will have to be purified by fire with all its followers. 
Elders Amasa Lyman and Charles C. Rich will continue their operations at Western California, according to previous instructions, and not only keep an accurate account of all tithings, and of the general proceedings of all faithful brethren, that we may know of their good works, and hail them as brethren when we meet, but keep a perfect history of all who profess to be saints and do not follow their counsel, pay tithing, and do their duty, and report the same to us every mail, that they and their works may be entered in a book of remembrance in Zion, that they may be judged therefrom, and not impose upon the faithful. For it is not uncommon for men to say, I can do more good if I go to the mines than I can to stay here. And we want to prove such, and know whether they are true men or liars. When men, professing to be brethren, go to the mines according to their own counsel, we want them to stay until they are satisfied, until they have obtained enough to make them comfortable, and have some to do good with, and a disposition to use it for that purpose, and not run back here in a few months, lock up their gold, boast how much they have made, doing no good themselves, and hindering everybody else from doing good over whom they have an influence. Curse God, deny the Holy Ghost, and when spring opens run to the mines again, as some have done. Let such men remember that they are not wanted in our midst, for unless they speedily repent the wrath of an offended Creator will suddenly overtake them, and no power can stay it. Let such leave their carcasses where they do their work. We want not our burial grounds polluted with such hypocrites. But we have it in our hearts to bless all men who will do right, whatever their occupation, and our arms are ever open to embrace such, and we pray for all men who are ignorant or out of the right way, that our Heavenly Father will give them His Spirit, that they may learn and do right. To those who may fear coming to the valley on account of the scarcity of timber, we would say there is now four times more timber known within reasonable distance of the city than there was one year since and every season opens new stores of wood in the surrounding mountains, and all the difficulty is the scarcity of help to remove the wood and timber to the valley before the falling of snow. Beside, coal has been discovered, from whence it can be brought on a railway, easily constructed, and there is more and nearer in prospect. Furnaces and forges are much needed here, for the furnishing of mill irons, machinery, farming utensils, culinary vessels, railway tracks, and many other things, and we hope that Elder Pratt has sent on men who will be here to start the business this season. If he has not, we trust that he will not lose sight of this important object against another winter. Elders Orson Pratt and George D. Watt are wanted at this place with their families, and we shall expect them as, as early in 1851 as circumstances will permit. At such time as Elder Pratt shall find it convenient or necessary to facilitate his return, he will call to his assistance Elder F. D. Richards, who will succeed him in the presidency of the church on the British Isles, and we would suggest Elders George B. Wallace and Levi Richards for his counselors. So far as we have been informed, Elder Pratt has done a great and good work in England, but his labors are now needed at home, and if the saints should mourn his loss, we would say, Be comforted, and come with him, or follow him as fast as you can. But if you cannot at present, you will find in his successor, Elder Richards, a counselor, president, and friend, and worthy of your prayers and confidence. Elders Wilford Woodruff and Amasa Lyman are expected here this season. We anticipate a visit from Elder Orson Hyde, who we hope will bring a host of saints with him, for the labors of the valley are great, compared to the number of laborers. A greater harvest is near at hand than there will be reapers to gather. Let those who start be prepared to come through without assistance from the valley, for we shall have no men to spare during harvest to help immigrants. Companies are already organized and ready to start for Green and Platte Rivers, to keep ferries during the high waters for the accommodation of the emigration. We would urge upon all saints the importance of keeping in view the perpetual emigrating fund, and of adding thereto, all in their power in present season, for every succeeding year will be more and more eventful in the progress of the work of God, and more and more saints will be ready and want to gather to Zion. We warmly anticipate that such will be the interest felt, and the funds collected in the British Isles, that we can commence bringing forward the saints from that region one year hence, and the Presidency in England will take special care to be ready to act on future instructions on this subject. Elders of Israel, be faithful in your calling, feeding the sheep, feed the lambs of the flock, and proclaim the gospel in all simplicity, meekness, and love, whenever you have the opportunity, as it shall be given you by the power of the Holy Ghost, which you will always have for your counselor, if you are faithful. And let all the saints give diligent heed unto the counsel of those who are over them in the Lord, upholding them by the prayer of faith, keeping themselves pure and humble, and they will never lack wisdom from above, and by faith and works search out your way to Zion. 
Several elders have been appointed missions to England, Scotland, the Society Islands, the States, and Western California, as will be seen by the minutes of the General Conference on the 6th of April, to which we refer for particulars concerning any business transacted. We are happy in saying to all that a brighter day is dawning on the intellectual prosperity of Sion, that the university recently established by the State of Deseret bids fair to accomplish the object for which it was instituted, that it is under the supervision of faithful and intelligent men, who will consider no labor too great to carry out the wishes and greatest possible good of those for whose benefit the, the institution was founded, and we earnestly solicit the cooperation of all the saints, and particularly the elders in all nations, to gather, as they may have the opportunity, books in all languages, and on every science, apparatus, and rare specimens of art and nature, and everything that may tend to beautify and make useful and forward or bring the same to the regents of our university for the benefit of all such as may hereafter seek intelligence at their hands. Brethren, farewell. May the blessings of heaven and earth be multiplied unto you, and your hearts be warm, and receive and improve upon the same in righteousness, and the time hasten that we may meet you in this land of peace, is the constant prayer of your brethren in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brigham Young, Heber C. Kimball, Willard Richards, Great Salt Lake City, Deseret, N.A., April 12, 1850.